Hello, this is Kristen. Hi, Kristen. How you doing? This is Jake. I'm good. How are you, Jake? I am very, very good. Um, I just wanted to call you in regards to my snow video, as we talked about earlier. All right, Kristen, so here's the setup. I want to do a video on the snow thrower, not like a typical uh, overview video like everyone does. I want to do something a little different, a little epic, if you will. Put a little JTLK twist on there. You guys all right with that? Absolutely. We're excited. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kristen. All right. Thanks, Jake. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. So there you go, guys. You heard it yourselves. The folks at Snapper want me to make the most epic video I can to wrap up our series on the 82-volt snow thrower. With all that being said, cue the B-roll montage. What's going on everybody? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be talking all about the Snapper 82 volt battery powered snow thrower. Now as you guys have seen from the past couple of videos, I've been putting that thing to its paces. I've put it in light snow, I've put it in regular snow, and unfortunately this year we really didn't get slammed with a blizzard or a snowstorm. It's just been a very mild winter. And with that, it's also been a very unusual year. As a matter of fact, the snow might be finishing up a little early this year as the time I'm shooting this video right now all of the snow is completely melted and we have temperatures in the 40s and 50s now for the next couple of weeks so I think we might be heading into spring right now or we have one last snow to await but either way I'm not going to wait on that I'm going to go ahead and make this video today which is really just me giving a formal review of the unit now to start that off we need to go ahead and talk about some specifications here on the unit itself so let's go ahead and do that Nightlights, push start button, 180 degree shoot, scraper bar for the ice, skid shoe for durability, 20 inch clearing width, 20 foot throwing distance, and up to 75 minutes of runtime, all packaged together for $499. Okay, so now that we've talked about the spec, I want to go ahead and explain what I like about this snow thrower compared to a gas-powered snow thrower. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I am in my garage. Here in my garage, just bought this. Uh... I got both my Snapper 82 volt right here and my traditional gas-powered snow thrower right here. This is a Craftsman 24-inch dual stage. I've had this for a long time, and so far I've been very impressed with it. But there are some situations where I think this battery-powered snow thrower can trump my gas power. Let me go ahead and talk about those. The first thing that I like about the electric snow thrower compared to the gas powered snow thrower is the sole fact that it is electric. And what I mean by that is compared to a gas powered engine, it is so incredibly quick and simple. When you're getting ready to use this unit, all you have to do are three things. Number one, pop in your charged battery, pull back this lever, press the button, unit's running, and you're good in business to clear the driveway. Whereas this gas powered unit here, you actually have to make sure there's oil in there, you gotta make sure there's good gas, you need to start it up, let it warm up, and in doing so, you're just taking away more of your work time by having to pay attention to your equipment. Whereas with this one, it's bing, bang, boom, you're clearing the driveway before you know it. With that being said, another reason I like the Snapper 82 volt is because it is very quiet and it has little to no gas fumes. And that's very important because us as homeowners and small business operators, we don't offer often have control on what we're able to do and when. A good example would be getting the driveway cleared, right? Optimally, we'd like to do it in the afternoons, but at times, due to our work schedule and time constraints, we really can't do that. And so we're only left to doing it in the early mornings. And this is especially true for all of my pro friends out there who do snow for a living, right? Most of it has to be done either in the early mornings or the late 
evening. And at that point, noise is a big concern, and that's not really a problem that you have to deal with with, with an electric snow thrower as it is quiet and it runs smoother. Whereas something like this, it's going to be a little bit louder, and it's probably going to be a little bit more of a noise complaint depending on the area that you live in. And then to touch on the gas fumes, I think this is very important to acknowledge because another common problem with gas-powered snow throwers, especially when you're using them at those early morning hours before you go to work or school or whatever you got going on today that's formal, um, are gas fumes getting on your clothes, right? That often happens with these gas-powered snow throwers, and it's a big disadvantage. But with battery-powered snow throwers like the Snapper 82 volt, it's not a problem that we have to deal with. We don't have to deal with any gas fumes. It's just going to make your early morning operation before you head off to work much cleaner and much smoother. Okay guys, so now let's go ahead and get into the performance. Now when it comes to performance with snow throwers, there are two situations that I like to consider how well the snow thrower is going to do in before I would recommend it to anybody. First situation that I would look at is how the snow blower does in snow drift. Now believe it or not, this is something that we all have to deal with with our snow throwers, right? No matter how light or how heavy of snow we get, we often get snow drift, which is basically snow blowing from other areas in the landscape and accumulating on your driveway it's a very good test for a snow thrower because in really bad years we can get up to eight inches to well over a foot but in our case we have a very mild winter so we got about four to eight inches of a drift that we're going to be messing with here and as you can see in the video clips that i'm putting up here the snow thrower is doing quite well as a matter of fact the closer i get to the edge the deeper the drift and the further the unit throws that's something to consider too right is when you're judging a unit based on its distance don't think that because it doesn't throw very far that it might not be that good just know that um, if you don't have deep snow it's not going to throw the snow very far right whereas if you have deep snow you're going to have more to mess with and it's going to be able to throw the snow at a further distance so just know that uh um, the amount of snow you have plays a big factor, right? So it's not fair to judge it on the first try. So I was sure to definitely try it a couple of times once we got some more snow. And as you can see, it is definitely doing very, very well. Okay, so now on to the second performance test. And that is going to be how the unit does in compacted snow, right? Snow that's been driven over, snow that's been walked upon. It's something that we all deal with on our driveways. And we often use our snow throwers to get through it. And when we do that, we're testing one feature in particular and that is going to be the metal scraper bar which kudos to snapper for including one by the way um, we want to test that metal scraper bar and see how it's going to do at helping the unit get down to the smooth driveway level and as you can see in some clips here this is some slightly to moderately compacted snow we got a little bit of ice accumulation here and you can see it's going through it like fire very easy getting down to the surface of the driveway and it's just looking good looking clean now let's see what happens when we try and run that through an area that's been driven over or walked upon aka a severely compacted area now as you can see here it's not doing all that good I as hard as I try to muscle the unit through these areas it's not able to get down to the smooth driveway level now I already know what a lot of you guys are going to think here and that is Jake well if this unit can't get down to the bare driveway level in the super compacted areas then it's not worth it well I would have to disagree with that because this isn't really just a problem with the snapper unit itself this is a problem with all snow throwers no matter how big or how small a snow thrower is with a scraper bar here it's not always going to be able to get the super compacted stuff right especially on a really cold day where that stuff is frozen to the ground you are not getting to the bare to the bone surface of that driveway I can tell you from experience as I have tried it with my dual stage craftsman snow thrower just couldn't get down to the surface in those super compacted areas
So final verdict, do I recommend the snow thrower? And the answer is yes. A couple of reasons I mentioned in the video. Number one, it because it is electric, it's going to be easier for you. It's going to be quieter. You don't have to deal with any fumes and it's also easier to just put the battery in and go. Whereas with most gas powered snow throwers, you might struggle getting them started if it's too cold, right? So it's a very nice piece of machinery as it's simple and it saves you a lot of time. Now with that being said, I highly recommend it for those of you guys who have small driveways with light to moderate snowfall as well as those of you lawn kids out there who are looking to start adding snow management into your lawn care business you want something that's quick that's easy that you could put in the back of your truck and simply drive to your clients this snow blower is that and i promise you it will get the job done right so that's all i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please be sure to subscribe to the channel and i'll show you how to get the deepest darkest greenest thickest lawn on the block I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, your lawn is going to be dominated. See you later.